uh, advertise it, and that's probably part of the reason that you guys are here, other than the fact that trying to see what, what kind of Jedi your favorite professors are going to pretend to be. There's no pun intended. I picked the, probably the most good-looking character for myself. You can, you can call me uh, Patrick Yoda from now on if you like to. <laughs> and because my, my promotion is hinged on one person, I picked the most handsome-looking Jedi to be our uh, department heads, in case you don't know. <laughs> He, he is the most important person, as far as I'm concerned, all right? And just a little flash, all right, maybe not, no flash yet. Um, he is going to actually give you um, the most important part of, uh, of this show. Um, you saw the video. There is probably about, I don't know, about 15 videos out there already that you can get on various places, YouTube and your favorite sites to actually see this autopsy. What, what we are trying to do here, actually, of course, we're trying to put on a show to try to get you here. But really, what's most important is actually the last few slides of this, this presentation, if you will. We don't try to make it too rigid like a class. So please stay for the last few minutes. And trust me, I know it's not easy to get all six Jedis to be on time, especially Jedis with PhD degrees. We'll do our best. And each one, I limited everybody to be about three slides. So you'll be getting out of here on time. I also have a 7 o'clock dinner appointment, so I'll be late already, but we'll try to be on time. Um, first thing first, uh, a few highlights. So I think what we want to, is if those of you who actually seen the poster, we will actually talk about six major areas, um, chips, and these are not like tortilla chips or, or potato chips. I hope you understand the difference, that these are integrated circuits. That's the class that I teach. And uh, obviously, we're talking about a mobile phone here. There will be antennas, lots of antennas, a lot of very cool antennas. And the antenna is used to actually connect you to the wireless network. So we will have those three topics to begin with. But at the end of the day, I think what you guys or girls actually buy the iPhone is not because of the hardware. Who cares about the hardware? As long as it doesn't drop your call, as long as it checks your email, you're OK with it. It's really the apps. It's really the software. And, and more important is how does it actually affect your daily life? I tell you, I. I see a lot of crazy pictures of what people do. You see, I have this additional thing here, because I have to charge my phone about three times a day. And I have three different batteries that I keep on charging it so that I am always connected. So it's really how to make you connected to the society. And that's what we call social network. And we have some experts here that is going to actually explain to you, if you're as giggy as some of the professors here, you can actually see how this affects your life. And last but not least, last but not least, we, we will talk about I mean, we all want to look good, right? The phone also wants to look good. So we have somebody to tell us a little bit more about the display. And I think there's been a lot of debate about, you know, if some of you seen the, uh, the iPhone 20 versus the Galaxy 23. <laughs> so, I mean, for those of you who actually don't, don't actually get the, uh, for those of you who didn't get actually the, um, the, 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 the joke there is that, you know, by the time you get to, iPhone 20 is so long because you've got 20 lines of icons, and then Galaxy 23 is going to be like a plasma TV that is that big. <laughs> and, and very fortunately, in our department, we actually have the world, one of the world's premier experts in display technology that uh, Professor Koch is going to actually talk to us a little bit about it. And I'm still trying to convince him that the, the, the iPhone 5 does have a better display, but remain to be seen. So he will tell you. And he just doesn't think that is actually quite big enough. So. Um, I think we can go ahead and do the thing. Now, th that picture that you saw, of course, you can download it from the internet. In fact, that one is from the internet. It's uh, one of my favorite sites, yeah, ifixit.com. I always like to fix things. That's how my son thinks that I'm a hero. I fixed one of these for him. And this is the real thing. This is how I. <laughs> Okay, ju ju just give me two minutes, th th 30 seconds. The iPhone is very impressive, all right? The bill of material, for those of you who have taken 3,400, you know what bill of material is, the bomb. It's about 200 US dollars. They've been maintaining it. This, I taught my PhD students one Saturday morning when I bought this in to solder it for like the fifth time for my son, and they say, what are you doing, Professor Yu? This I bought in San Diego, Legoland, $9 US dollars. 
Legoland probably makes about three dollars on this. All right, and I know this is actually you know where it's making, where it's making, right? <laughs> now, how much do you think this thing actually costs to make? It doesn't matter. The, the, the merit of the story is that it's not really whether it's as complicated and sophisticated as the iPhone or it's just a simple lightsaber. There's a lot of electronics. There is a little MEMS gyro sensor in here as I wave. It makes the sound. I tell my PhD student if they can make one of these with less than a dollar bill of material by the end of their PhD, they will get a PhD from me. All right? <laughs> so it's, it's very important that you keep in mind that when you see these little things daily life, there's a lot of ECE in here, all right? Not just in the iPhone. So if I can trust that you are responsible individuals, we may pass this around. This is indeed actually uh, a property of the ECE department that we actually took this thing apart. And I told Ross that I won't put it back together because <laughs> I tell you it's hard. Um, in the next few slides, what we want to actually talk about is uh, just about the chips. Because I only know about chips. Uh, we call it integrated circuit. That was intended, as you can imagine. <laughs> I think the students in my 3,400 classes know that I'm kind of goofy, so that's all right. But for the rest of you, first time coming, this is what I want to show you. It's all about the ICs. What this is actually is just a list, an incomplete list. It's a preliminary list of what are the key ICs that actually went into it. Now, if you think about Intel, which is actually the chip that probably all of you use, whether it's a Mac or, 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 or um, what is the other computer called? PC, that's right. Uh, uses it. And Intel, some of you may or may not know, is the largest semiconductor company in the world, but they're not listed here. And they are very panicking about it. When you are not a customer, when you're not a supplier, I should say, to Apple, it makes you very nervous. And if you take a look at the list here, some of the key player today, the emerging Qualcomm, all right, and you see this uh, little, not little, but this company here, we'll show you a little bit about this uh, Murata company. They actually do the packaging, they actually don't make the chips. The company who actually, I'm not trying to tell you to buy the stock of these companies, if you know what I mean, all right? But, but they do actually tell you who are the leaders. And because iPhone is one of the leading devices out there, they command some of the things that you don't think that technology company will actually get together and do it. And I'll show you one example of that. So there are a lot more details about the chips. I won't go through all of it. We will post the slide online and you can actually look at it later. First of all, uh, the, probably the most talk about chip actually inside the iPhone is the, the uh, app process, the application processor. Now it's actually A6. This is the first uh, design that is completely done. I mean completely done in Cupertino by Apple. Most of you don't even think that Apple actually have an IC design team. They acquired a little company called PA Semiconductor or PA Semi in the December of 2009 to get ready for this. Guess what? Samsung has a lot of circuit designers that Apple didn't have. That's what they've been planning to do. And, and one of the really amazing things on this thing, I need my wireless power somewhere, um, is this. Most of the time when you see a circuit, you see these things, what we call the sea of gates. You're swimming in a lot of transistors. They are very, very small. In fact, you don't see transistor when you look at this, what we call a die photo. It's not that it's dead, it's just a die. It's a little die, okay? In fact, I have a little wafer here to show you. Those 3,400 students have actually seen it. This is an eight inch wafer. We that, that chip, this is actually made by Apple and is manufactured by Samsung. Go figure. Yes, Samsung is actually their supplier. They don't actually come out these. This is an 8 inch wafer. The one that is actually getting nowadays in the manufacturing is 12 inch. Bigger is better because the costs actually go down, okay? And what is actually really amazing for this particular design is that while you don't actually see the transistors, mostly what you see is the wiring that connect the transistor to make the circuit actually work because isolated devices make no sense, they have to actually be connected together, is this part here. Th what I'm trying to flash on the screen is that it's getting to the point where the custom layout by hand by a designer can actually get better performance than what is actually computer generated layout. All of the digital circuit in our world, the way we build integrated circuit or whatever you call a system on a chip, 
they are actually generated by what we call uh, EDA tools. Um, gosh, I even forgot what EDA stands for. I just always call it electronic design automation. That's what it is. Um, but humans are better. This is the first time actually a chip is actually digital chip is hand laid out. And Apple does it. Apple always does a little bit further than others to get that performance. Okay, so that's the one thing you want to highlight. So if you go to a cocktail party tonight or something, you can say, hey, did you know that the A6 has a custom layout ARM core inside? <laughs> okay, this actually is very dear to my heart, this next two chips, okay? I'm an RF guy. RF is radio frequency, which is actually kind of like an analog circuit, but it runs at the radio frequency. And radio frequency, we're typically you're thinking about something right around one gigahertz. Most of you probably in my class have heard about this. Your cell phone have, uh, a frequency that goes between 700 megahertz all the way up to 3 gigahertz, whether it's actually cellular, Bluetooth, WCDMA, Wi-Fi, whatever you name it. That's RF. This chip here is what is made by Qualcomm. It handles all of the cellular, and the rumor is that it also handles the GPS as well. GPS is very, very difficult to actually build because the signal level is very, very low because it comes from the satellite. It doesn't come from a base station. Uh, Qualcomm has been trying very hard to actually have the cellular and the Wi Fi to be on the same chip, but they're not successful. I'll show you who actually made the Wi Fi chip in the next slide. But this one here, because when people uh, did the teardown, they didn't see the GPS module. So they actually suspect that it actually is integrated inside the uh, Qualcomm chip here. <sighs> How many people know about inductors? Good. See, when I, when I did my PhD some years ago, I won't tell you how long ago, I told my father that I was working on one of the three fundamental components in electronic circuit, namely RLC. I was working on the inductor, and then my father said, well, you should work on the other two first. Uh, you should work on the other two as well before you get your PhD. He always asked me to do more. But it turns out actually building these inductors is something that is required for this RFIC because you need to work at high frequency and don't burn a lot of power. Power is actually one of the most important concepts in, in, in the circuit world. So if you guys are interested in this thing, what it translates into is how long does your cell phone can talk before you have to recharge it again. Like remember somebody charges three times a day and talk a lot, right? So it's very important for this to be low power. An inductor and transformer helps you to do that. It helps you to do that. All right, let's try to get some wireless going here. All right, if, if Bill Gates' magic works, Nope. <laughs> That's why Steve Jobs is the man. <laughs> All right, so if you look at what 4G, I think you should. It just, Steve, I think Steve usually is a little faster than Bill. I have one of their old pictures, if you guys want to see back in the 80s when they introduced it. So, so back to that picture, what I want to highlight, did somebody took out the battery? See, I told you power is important. There's no power in this thing. Anyways, uh, this is what you will get. For those of you who just got an email notice that uh, should I get to the iPhone 5 and go to LTE and 4G, you will, somewhere in Hong Kong, you can get 55 megabits per second. Do you know how fast that is? Yes. She always saved the day for me. Vanessa, she does a lot of help. I think most of you who pick up the poster knows we acknowledge everybody that helps. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, this is astonishing. When I got out of school, we didn't even have Wi-Fi. I mean, we were talking about one megabit per second for Wi-Fi at that time, if anybody know what Wi-Fi is. Today, you can do it on cellular, OK? OK. All right, more exercise for me. This is what is the most astonishing. Not so much about the technology. This is also a 28 nanometer CMOS process design. This is done by Broadcom. Remember I told you about the little company, not little company, it's a big Japanese company called Murata. They actually does the packaging. This is a cross section of the packaging. This is actually what we refer to as called a system in a package, a SIP, an SIP, as opposed to a SOC, a system on a chip. A system is something that you can call, like the motherboard of iPhone is a system. For us, the IC designer, we call this a system. We call this as a SOC. But this goes beyond. It puts multiple of these chips because the requirement on these circuits are different. They use different technology to actually get the best performance. But all those are just too technical. 
It's all about business. And what is the business story behind this? The iPhone is about 35%. The, the, the third iPhone 5 is about 35% lighter than the iPhone 4, and it's thinner. All right? This is just one example why that is the case. So Apple goes to Broadcom, and then goes to Skywork that builds all these filters, and they say, you know what? I want your chip, but I don't like the package that you put your IC, your integrated circuit in. You are going to go to Japan and work with the best in-class supplier and put all your chips in this package that I like because it's the thinnest I can find in the world. And it will burn the least amount of power. Now, if a little other company called Banana go to Broadcom and ask for this, I don't think they will listen. But when Apple comes, you say, please, whatever you want, I'll do it for you, right? So you have to understand the, the, the behind technology, the, 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 the scale of economy is very significant. If you look at, are we going to pass around along the, 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 the teardown Apple? You, you will be amazed why Apple is the most valuable company today in the world, period. 600 billion US dollar market cap, they are worth every penny of it. And I bet you there's a lot of ECE engineers working in that company, okay? So we'll come back to this point, and now my time is up. See, Ross was supposed to kick me off, but he didn't. He was too nice to me. So, <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I, I have one too. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change mine for a, for a a high-tech version, but Patrick, why don't you come out here first? Okay. The other thing you've got to remember is uh, we, we have got the uniform on. So, uh, <laughs> this one says... Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a very fair. I, I was a poor engineer at one point, so whenever Apple gives out free T-shirt, I go, I bring my wife, and I bought my sister. They all get extra large. I got three of these. It's one of my favorite T-shirts. Yes. I had to buy mine, says, what does it say? Well, he, he's the hand, so he has he is a better, higher salary, so I, 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 I get my t-shirt for free. This is the most amazing t-shirt yet. So yes. th this is actually, though, from uh, Apple headquarters, so it's the real thing. It's yeah, bought, turn around, show, bought, show bought the from, <laughs> Okay, thank you, Patrick. So um, I, I've been given the uh, task of talking about the antennas, and so, uh, the antennas are the, the only way the signals can come in and out of the mobile phone. And uh, you may think an antenna is very simple, but it's actually one of the, a very complicated thing. And if your mobile phone does not work properly, then one of the reasons normally is maybe there's something wrong with the phone. And if you know anything about the iPhone 4, you'll know uh, some of the controversy. So I brought this antenna here. This is one of the most simple antennas you can have. And uh, I'll take the top off. And you can see two wires come in, and one of the wires is this lower part, and one of the wires is the upper part. So it is a very simple antenna. And it works just like that. Energy comes out from all directions. But with a mobile phone, what you want to do is somehow wrap that around the phone and make it into, a, into the phone. So it's not, not very easy. And antenna design is all about how you do that. And if you know something about the iPhone, <laughs> then when you make the antenna on the phone, you've got to hold, hold the phone properly, else it's not going to work. So uh, what did Steve do? He has to hold his phone like this. And uh, for the iPhone 4, you heard of antenna gate. And in antenna gate, the, uh, when you held the phone at the bottom, then it would not work. And that's because the antennas are actually really wrapped on the outside of the phone. And uh, this is what was known as antenna gate. And in an iPhone 4, the antennas are here. And when you short this one with your finger, the phone does not work anywhere near as well. And you can actually see it sometimes on your phone. If you hold it here, it does not work too well. And other thing about mobile antennas is that they're very inefficient. Antenna like this may be 95% efficient. A mobile phone antenna is only 20% efficient, and all mobile phone antennas are just like that. So they're small and beautiful, but inefficient. So whenever they design a mobile phone, it's the beauty of the mobile phone that counts. 
And so the antenna just has to fit around it somehow, and that's what makes it inefficient. And so when we design it, we have to take into account how you hold it. And so we have uh, things like this. So this is Patrick's head. <laughs> and it's full of, uh, full of water and sugar. And when I <laughs> but, a, but an excellent brain. <laughs> and so when we do the measurements, we actually put the mobile phone on the antenna, uh, on this thing, to really find out what's happening. And this is one of the things that Apple may not have done when they first made their iPhone 4. So they may not have had enough experience in antenna design and did not do all the, all the modeling. So what did they do in the iPhone 5? Well, the iPhone 5 is, uh, solves all those problems. And the antennas are at the, one is at the bottom and one is at the top. So when you hold it at the bottom, the one at the top works. When you hold it at the top, the one at the bottom works. <laughs> When you hold it in the middle, both of them work. So this is a very special thing of, of modern mobile phones. Two antennas. And the other part is, for GPS and Wi-Fi, the antennas is just underneath this part here. The big difference between iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 is that the back of it has plastic and a, and, a, and a metal body. And so uh, we can put the mobile antennas for Wi-Fi and GPS at the bottom bit, and the antennas for mobile phone are here and here. So um, have you got the, the phone? I, I, I try to put it back together right here for you. <laughs> OK, maybe we put it there. And the last part is, in the mobile phone, because it covers so many frequencies, <coughs> From 700 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz, we need to have a special switch inside to switch between the bands. So uh, maybe you and I can point out the different parts of the chip. Sure. OK. All right. So <coughs> well, I guess my voice is loud enough. Let me just say that the, the, the Star Wars poster took longer than taking apart the iPhone, just once for all, OK? That took longer than taking this apart. This took about four hours. Um, what, what you will see is actually um, the, this part here, obviously. What is this? Thank you. All right. It came out from here. And I tell you, a lot of things are either uh, using magnets or using really strong glue to put together. So when I had to get this thing out, it was bent. The whole battery was bent. All right. I have to flatten the again. <laughs> <laughs> Is. It comes from the sideway this way, obviously. I didn't try to advertise who the company is, but the SIM card goes there. Right here is where the, right under this magnetic shoe is actually the um, A6 processor. And then on this side here is actually the, uh, um, the Qualcomm chip. All right. And th there is actually, to be honest, if you go online, go to chipworks.com, they actually have a lot more detailed, very glorious, uh, gorgeous pictures of this. So uh, we're not trying to pretend. Now, we know this is a little camera here, but we cannot do this. We cannot do that in the, with the chipworks.com if you really want to know. This is why we do this in the middle of the night. So we're going to pass this around a little bit, okay. and you can talk about the antenna. So uh, also one here, if you, when, you, when your mobile phone vibrates, you may wonder, how does it vibrate? It's actually a little, uh, uh, a little, motor, a mo little motor just here with, uh, with okay. the weight on it. So that's the vibrator. And uh, so in this case, the antennas, that's one antenna at the top, and this is one antenna at the bottom, down the bottom. And no matter what phone you buy, which is a 4G, uh, 4G mobile phone, LTE, they will always nearly have one antenna at the top and one at the bottom, one way or another. Even the Sony, the modern Sony phones do exactly the same, one at the top, one at the bottom. And as far as I can tell, this is the bottom of the phone here. There is a Wi-Fi antenna on a sticker down the bottom of the phone as well. Uh, so then all these are connectors, flat wire connectors, and over the top we have, uh, this is the button, is that right? That is the button, yes. And then we have the camera at the other side. That's right. And, and I borrowed this from my son's school bag because, <laughs> I'll buy him a new one, it, because you can turn it around and you can see the other side, yes. 
Ah. See, I, I tell you one thing, no matter how good the technical content is, packaging, marketing, <laughs> all right? Okay, so we're gonna pass this around, but we put tapes around it, please, even though I don't think I can put it back together, but in the slightest chance I do, you know, I get, may get to keep the phone, if you know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> so, so we'll pass it around. So the other thing to notice about this phone is just how complicated it is. You may think, oh, mobile phone, two or three chips, put them together, but man, this is complicated. You look at it in detail, there are so many screws and wires and, and special connections in there, you just wouldn't believe how many engineers are needed. And at the end of this uh, lecture, we also have a small advertisement for Apple. Apple are looking for uh, internships, so you may be able to go to Cappuccino for a few months to do an intern as well. Okay, so, uh, thank you. Without further ado, uh, so I'm trying to talk about the networks. And I thought I have 10 minutes or 15 minutes uh, before, but then uh, obviously this is not realistic. I was just told I only have five minutes or less, right, I suppose. Um, and I'm so happy to see, you know, we have a full house here. And I think fundamentally we all have a, a fundamental desire to, to smash things or tear things up. Uh, so I think maybe we can do a part two. Next time maybe we can use a hammer to smash a, maybe a mat air and uh, try this again. <laughs> Okay, so now basically, uh, for iPhone, you know, for that to be useful, it's more than just a phone, right? You have to talk to the external world. So obviously, just the phone itself would, wouldn't work. The reason that you can call your friends, which is uh, you know, miles away, is because there's an infrastructure, there's a network for that. And then one important reason you may consider upgrading your, 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 your phone to iPhone uh, uh, 5 is because one, one, one unique feature it advertises uh, is going to be are, are, are capable of the, uh, to, to talk to the 4G network, so-called the LTE. So what exactly is the network behind? Now, before I talk about this, I just want to ask a few questions or, or impose a very few, few uh, simple concepts. So first of all, uh, an important concept is we're talking about radio wireless communication, right? So what is wireless? Behind the media uh, is basically radio frequency and electromagnetic spectrum. So radio wave is one of the EM wave that you may probably learn in high school. So what is EM wave? It's basically some oscillating E field and, and, and B field, right? So uh, never mind. So set, second, second concept, which is very important, is how the radio wave propagate. Okay, let me ask you a question. Now you talk to your friend. Uh, you know your mobile phone is trying to communicate to something called a base station. How often do you see the base station when you talk to your friend? Not very often, right? So. But then, have you ever wondered why the base station can, why, why you can still talk to the base station without seeing the base station? So this is because of the radio propagation. In fact, when we talk about radio wave, there are one important parameter called frequency. The higher the frequency is, for example, five gigahertz, the more line of sight propagation it would be. That is, if you're talking about very high frequency, something even higher than five gigahertz, um, in order to communicate to the other side, you need to see the other side because radio wave essentially propagate in a straight line, okay? On the other hand, if you operate at a smaller frequency, something below two gigahertz or even lower, okay, then amazingly, the radio wave can turn. So this, there's some effects called diffraction and scattering, which probably you heard from high school physics. So this is the picture for diffraction. So if you have a transmitter here, the radio wave, in addition to this line of sight propagation, it will also diffract. Uh, uh, to the other side. So for radio access application, that is you're, 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 you're holding a phone which is moving around and you never see the transmitter, it is very important that you can propagate on non-line of sight. And because of that, the range of frequencies that are suitable for this non-line of sight applications uh, or propagation is actually very limited. So that's why we always see or hear uh, the radio spectrum is very expensive the 4G operators, or even in the, in the past, the 3G operators, pay billions of dollars to bid for the, uh, just a license to operate. Okay, so it's very expensive because the range of frequencies suitable for propagation, or line of sight propagation is really limited. Okay, so these are the two fundamental concepts. And because of that, so you can see that the network, the radio interface, the design, is all talking about how we can uh, maximize the spectral efficiency. That is given a limited piece of spectrum, how we can, you know, maximize the, the bit rate. Uh, okay, so for those of you who are new to the communication, this is just a very brief overview of this uh, evolution of the wireless systems. So in a very old, old, old time, we have this uh, so-called first generation. 
So the phone is very ugly and very big and very heavy. Um, and then we have this GSM, which is we call second generation network. Okay, so this is how a GSM phone looks like. Then we have the first generation, the so-called wideband CDMA. This is right now they basically most most of the phones are using uh, uh, this wideband CDMA PG networks. And then now what's so special is uh, the network is now upgrading to 4G, the LTE, so-called. Now what's so special about LTE? It gives you better performance. Okay, what do we mean by performance? Like a uh, higher bit rate, uh, like better coverage. Like you can also travel, use your phone uh, even when you travel on a Buddha train, traveling at 500 kilometers per hour. Okay, things like that. So I'm not going to go through all these details. In terms of the deployment, deployment situation of LTE, the 4G systems, this is the, the red area is the, is the countries with commercial LTE service. And you, as you can expand, you can see more and more countries will have LTE deployed uh, in the future. Notice here that this part, where is it? This part it is Asia, right? And it's mainland China. So mainland China right now still doesn't have LTE surface, but uh, uh, you for sure you 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 start to see this uh, in the in the near future. Okay, so this is the network. Now we say uh, 4G system, so it must be better, right? So why this is better? Now, in fact, if you look at the uh, the you know the the, the components, the, the fabrics of this uh, uh, iPhone that you are passing around, you would be able to notice there are actually multiple IC VLSI uh, uh, ASICs within this uh, this phone. So there is a one famous uh, processor called ASICS. This ASICS processor is actually plays the role as an application processor. So all your applications you play with your iPhone actually are executed or running on this powerful processor. Okay, but your iPhone is more than just a, a computer. The iPhone also talks to the networks, right? Talks to the communication thing. So there are two communication interfaces. One is the LTE, the other is the Wi-Fi, uh, and also Bluetooth. So all these are actually done by separate chips here. So of course, uh, Imagine you, uh, uh, behind this, this thing, there's some chips that uh, is uh, taking care of the LTE communication. If you zoom into this uh, details, inside this chip is implementing some very complicated process, okay, that uh, translates bits to, to symbols, uh, etc. So there are two important features in LTE uh, systems that makes it uh, achieving higher bit rate and higher reliability. One thing is called MIMO, that is to say, uh, we have multiple transmit antenna and multiple receive antenna, so that we can send multiple streams at the same time. Like, the, like in this figure, you can send a red stream and blue stream simultaneously. At, at the receiver, if you can resolve the red stream from the blue stream, then you can actually double the full throughput. So this is how it works. Increase capacity. You can also use this technique to improve the coverage, improve the weather operated. Uh, uh, like you have two copies of the similar information sent from different sources. So then you can actually experience different fading and then you can uh, have, have this diversity protection so that you can cover uh, 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 longer, longer distance and have more higher reliability. Okay, so finally, uh, so <laughs> applications. Uh, okay, give me one, one minute. <laughs> uh, is this me or this is, not, this is not my part, right? Okay, so I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was, makes me feel like I need to go back and take some networking classes. Uh, just one quick comment. I noticed that the mobility of the iPhone. Okay, all right. The thing is not moving very fast. Forget about mobility, all right? Let's, to be fair to the audience in the back, try to actually pass it on a little bit faster. So uh, we hope we'll talk about the apps, the, the things that you love the most about iPhone. Okay. Uh, okay, let me watch the time. So, uh, first of all, um, I'm asked to talk about apps. So, uh, an iPhone 5, so I check out that there are two new apps. Of course, there are some very well-known apps, right? Uh, like uh, uh, Surrey, etc. There are two new apps uh, where one, of course, is uh, Apple Maps. A lot of new features, right? And has been much talked about. So. Uh, I don't think I need to talk about it too much, and uh, you can see, right, I, I was assigned to be the Jedi on fire, so, so somehow it's maybe related to this. Uh, but uh, if you check out, uh, the, the, sometimes you find something very funny in the VD app, uh, in the VD map, but uh, it, it's, it's improving every day, so it's interesting. You, you can even check uh, uh, Zhang O, you may see a big earthquake there. Okay. Uh, now, of course, for the map, uh, one important uh, feature is the uh, location, okay? 
Uh, for the locations, uh, usually there are two positioning techniques. Uh, of course, uh, GPS and um, uh, also Wi-Fi. Uh, here, I just want to let you kind of uh, get the view uh, uh, pictures that for GPS, actually, you as long as your phone, uh, you know, can can have a line of sight uh, with three satellites, then you can determine your own position. Now, this is actually quite like a miracle if you think about it, right? Three satellites in the sky are serving you, one guy. <laughs> think about it. And then you will be able to lower your position, okay? Now, another technique is uh, <laughs> Wi-Fi, okay? Wi-Fi position, I think you are familiar with it. You have been using it every day. Okay, usually the idea is that, um, you know, there are many such a uh, uh, router and server they, they know their own positions through the GPS or other means. And then, uh, because if you re your phone receives a, a list of those uh, uh, Wi-Fi wi signals, they have different strength and uh, because of different distance, then from those, it will form a kind of a landscape okay, of the Wi-Fi signals. So by memorizing how the landscape uh, at a particular point is. You can actually do a lookup table or some kind of algorithm to figure out where you are. So that's the kind of Wi-Fi positioning techniques. Now, one very interesting thing I, I realized is that, well, because it all depends on the table and recognizing the landscape of Wi-Fi signals, then you can actually do the positioning offline, okay? So meaning that even if you don't have internet access, okay, you don't need to log into the Wi-Fi, but you can still have the positioning. So actually, uh, I tried with my uh, humble uh, iPad 2, and I took a bus from campus to uh, John Jin Ao. Actually, I can have outdoor Wi-Fi positioning. You, you can try. Not very accurate, but, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, um, I want to point out that uh, these are related to some uh, 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 ECE knowledge, like signal processing and, and uh, uh, wireless communication and networking. Okay? So, and then the... The app I really want to talk about is really possible because this is something very new, and you can also uh, have it if you have the um, uh, new or uh, second, uh, uh, almost new uh, iPod, iPod Touch. Um, so basically, in one sentence, it's simple, just an e-wallet, okay? It lets you keep all those uh, e-card, coupons, ticket, or boarding pass in one place, okay? And because this is uh, software, so, it is kind of intelligent, it can automatically update. So if you have the e boarding pass and the gate change, then you'll be automatically uh, noti notified. And one very interesting thing is that this is uh, actually a location-based uh, uh, app. In, in other words, you don't need to look for the pass, look for the ticket in your wallet. The ticket will just jump, pop up, okay, when you uh, get close to the stop, to the shop, okay? So in other words, uh, the ticket look for you, okay? Uh, now all these are based on uh, uh, barcodes, okay? Uh, instead of uh, some octopus slat like uh, technology, okay? Because it's uh, getting, a, it, barcode is more popular, um, and also it's very expensive, uh, inexpensive to, to, to um, 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 uh, pins and also to uh, decode. Uh, so it allow more business to uh, enter this. Okay. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, not, not always, right? Sometimes uh, buckle could be expensive, like in this particular case. Uh, okay, now another thing is that um, uh, Apple launched a buckle not just as a usual app, it's actually a kind of platform, a little bit like a store. So it now all these business develop their own app so that they develop their own uh, U coupon or ticket and, and then those will uh, uh, store in one place. Okay, so, uh, so you need the development tool, you need to write the app in order to, you know, uh, uh, using the right API in order to use the password. Uh, so there's a problem then, because when it just launched, not too many companies have that yet. But uh, in US, for example, Starbucks and uh, Target or uh, United Airlines already support it, and uh, McDonald's in France support it. Uh, but not too many yet, so that's why some uh, 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 users are not uh, very happy. However, if you look at the actually China, the QQ movie tickets, uh, C Trip, okay, Se Wang, 
and also uh, Chula, also these travel uh, agents, they are very quick, okay? They're very quick. Okay, there's an actual video trying to check out whether the uh, passport, uh, boarding pass work, okay, at our Hong Kong airport. Uh, but I guess I, I, I don't have time for that. If you're interested, you can uh, check it out. Uh, so barcode is interesting because I, I work on signal coding. So uh, actually my ex-FIP and, and now some of my existing uh, postgraduate students, we are doing research, we are developing our own apps. So actually, uh, you know, that there's a trend that the company like to put the logo in the in the in the uh, QR code. So we actually uh, develop uh, with my students a code that can be decoded, okay, as well as uh, you can see the company logo uh, much better. Okay, in the end, I just want to conclude that uh, you know, uh, Steve Jobs once called that uh, people who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. That's, that's basically when, when, the iPhone five, uh, when the iPhone was first launched in uh, 2007, okay? That's exactly the idea behind. So I think here, um, I want to generalize a little bit this statement. So uh, for those who are really serious about mobile software, should also develop the app using the easy know-how. And uh, particularly for barcodes and uh, coding, image processing, wireless, all these are the easy know-how that help us to put all these things together and in a way and create something interesting and new, turn an idea into reality. Okay, I think with this, uh, I will stop and pass the mic to James. Hello everyone, I'm James. Um, I just want to ask one quick question. Who are you actually, regardless whether it's Facebook, Weibo, Weixin, WhatsApp, who have actually just sent a message, share things, check out your blog, actually just one hour ago? How about two hours ago? How about just within today? Can you raise your hand? Okay, I think pretty much more than 50%. Did you guys notice one thing? How many of you actually know that Apple used to be called Apple Computer? You know that, right? They actually launched their iPhone 3. On the same day, they changed the company name from Apple Computer to Apple. Do you guys know why? Do you guys know why? They actually changed their company name from Apple Computer to Apple on the day they launched the iPhone. So some people will say that because they're changing from a computer company to a phone company. But I would say that they're actually a social media company. Why is that? Well, actually, you guys should notice that. With the use of iPhone, actually right now you guys pretty much spend 50% of the time when you use the iPhone is actually not just checking email, submitting your assignment or those kind of things. You actually use it for social networking. In fact, the new iPhone 5 is really cool. <laughs> I remember um, in the past, I always need to teach my mom how to use email so that she can actually communicate with me, especially when I travel, she can locate me, right? After she got her first iPhone or iPad, right now if she didn't see me more than 12 hours, she will hunt me down by WhatsApp. <laughs> but right now, I think she don't even need to do that. Because if you notice that, actually, Right now, there's an app in iPhone 5. It's actually an app you can see that yourself, based on the positioning technology, the networking technology, the antenna technology, and the chipset technology, all this hardware technology together make a really cool software technique that you can locate a person right away. So how many times when you go to an event, 
let's say those students, when you just came to UST, what's your first impression? You feel like you're in a maze. You don't know where you're going to for your classroom, right? And then you, when you try to locate your friend for a tea time or right before the deadline of the assignment, <laughs> where are you right now? I barely need to look for you. With this, you can locate your friends, right? For what? Many interesting applications can be coming out from this platform. Not just the application, it's the creative use of the technology from the hardware to the software. So, if you pay more attention to the new iPhone 5 and also iOS 6, the operating system running inside the iPhone 5, did you notice one more thing? When you use your computers or other mobile phone to share some media or to share a news on a social networks, you always need to switch back and forth between the apps, right? But if you pay attention right now, actually Apple is integrating the connection with Facebook in a seamless way. That means when you go on iTunes to download your favorite song or download your favorite games to brag about the score you, 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 you got for your games today or to download any apps which is interesting you want to share, you basically can just do it one click within the same interface and everything will be shared right away. And most importantly, all this thing is actually built in within the OS, within the same interface. And you no longer need to do one thing, switch back and off different apps. But did you notice one thing? Actually, because of this, I was joking with my graduate student in the class uh, actually one hour ago. I guess in the future, you just need to have a mobile device like iPhone 5. You just need to log in once and you never log out from a social network. So pretty much we are doing social networking with all the things and all the time, right? So did you start to see that Apple seems like it's not just simply a computing company or an electronic company? It is actually a social networking company. And I'm going to give you another example here, sorry. I guess everyone should have some idea about Siri, right? I was actually playing with my friend's iPhone, making two Siri, talking to each other, back and forth. <laughs> so what else can we make use of Siri? Well, besides we treat it like an assistant, actually, to help to schedule some appointment or get some information, actually, Apple have really cool use of Siri to do social networking for you. Maybe you're too busy working on your assignment, but you really check out some videos forwarded by your friend, Gum Num Style, <laughs> and then you want to share with other people right away, right? So right now, within iOS 6 and also iPhone 5, actually you can just ask Siri to post the updates about you or to share the things that you have right away. So what can we see here? Basically, you become more cyber physically, social interacting with each other over this platform. So right now you're using Siri, using your audio to actually instruct the mobile device to share this information with others. Maybe in the future, maybe I can just use my iPhone. When I shake this, all of you will just get this information or the things I would like to share on the spot right away without going back to the internet and then you download it. So what I'm really amazed with Steve Jobs' vision, right? When he take out the name computer from Apple, I really think that, wow, engineering can really do a lot of interesting creative idea, not just limited into electronic and computing. It is actually making everything possible and so interesting in our daily social life. 
So that's pretty much I want to share with you guys, and I would like to pass the time to Professor Carl. Before we, before we let James go, I, I want you, for those of you who are actually Star Wars fans, you know, I, I, I did my best to accommodate good-looking Jedi. <laughs> now, for those of you who actually know what he, Anakin, eventually becomes, <laughs> uh -huh. so, you, you know, there's a very broad range of technology. The iPhone 5, there's a very broad range of faculty. They're all very talented. You can see we try to get all so, of here. So this Jedi evolved to be uh, Darth Vader. That's me. May you be the, lucky. The, you the, be dark, boy. the dark force. <laughs> I'm the all dark right. force. OK. Thank you, guys. But, but if you know, if you know uh, Star Wars, uh, Darth Vader is also the father of Luke Skywalker, who is uh, one of the other Jedi. OK, so the whole point of this uh, presentation is to show that uh, every ECE course can be related to one part of the uh, iPhone, right? So, so you can say that the entire electrical engineering curriculum is, is to make iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not just iPhone, also the Galaxy. So actually my, my task is to compare the iPhone uh, to the Galaxy. Uh, and uh, okay, so. Now, um, every part of the iPhone is related to one of our courses. And the most uh, noticeable part, of course, is the display. And what, what is the improvement in iPhone 5? The iPhone 5 has a screen that is uh, larger than the iPhone 4, but it's still smaller than the Galaxy, which I think is, uh, is a major mistake. I think the iPhone 5 display is still too small. Okay, so the iPhone 6 will be larger. <laughs> now, uh, we we one major uh, uh, characteristic of uh, of a display is uh, is color saturation, right? Now, in engineering, we we quantify everything. So, what is good color and what is bad color, and so on. Uh, we use a standard, and the standard. Uh, uh, there are two standards. One is called the NTSC standard, which is used for televisions. And there's another standard called uh, SRGB, which is used for mobile applications. Now, the iPhone 4 is 64% of the standard color gamut. Now, if you take my course, you know what is a color gamut. Uh, color gamut is basically you take the red, green, and blue pixels and uh, compare that with a certain standard. Now, the iPhone 5 is much higher saturation in terms of the uh, uh, color gamut is uh, more than 34% higher in color saturation. So you can take a look at the iPhone 4, iPhone 5. iPhone 5 looks more vivid. Uh, but it's still not the full NTSC. NTSC is, is the standard for television. Now, the Galaxy, turns out, is 100% of NTSC. Okay. So the iPhone 5 is still less color saturated than the Galaxy. But a lot of people are, look, uh, are, are saying, you can look on the web and so on, you will compare the Galaxy and the iPhone 5. The Galaxy actually is oversaturated. It is 100% it is NTSC, so, which is good for television. But the color balance, uh, the balance uh, of uh, our G and B, uh, somewhere here. Okay, it, it, it is uh, not very good uh, color balance. So the uh, end effect is that the color saturation is oversaturated for the galaxy. Uh, one other feature of the iPhone 5 uh, is an improvement in terms of a glare reflection. The reflection, if you take a phone, especially uh, under the sun or in a bright room, you see a lot of reflection from the surface, right? So that is called uh, glare. In, in the iPhone 5, they put some special coating to reduce that, to reduce that reflection. So it's much less reflection. And the consequence of less reflection is that uh, if you have high ambient light situation, the uh, contrast can be much uh, higher. It's actually 57% improvement in uh, contrast 
compared to the iPhone 4, so that's a major improvement. And uh, the resolution is still retinal, it's 326 ppi, uh, pixels per inch. Now, let me tell you an interesting story about the uh, retinal display. Actually, if you look at the, uh, 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 the res resolution needed ordinarily, people have been saying for a long time that resolution needs only to be about 200 ppi, right? But when Apple introduced the iPhone, Stephen Jobs uh, insisted that the resolution should be higher, okay? And, and he called it the retinal display. Now, people are laughing, right? It's impossible to make, first of all, and also we don't need that high resolution. But he is a marketing, he was a marketing genius, and he insisted, and the supplier to iPhone is LG, and LG spent a lot of time and a lot of effort to make this high resolution display uh, using the so-called IPS uh, display. And the end result is that it's a marketing success. And the original, one of the reasons why Apple was so successful was the retinal display, where everybody was talking about the retinal display, especially the customer who didn't know better. So there was a success. And after <coughs> iPhone uh, introduced the retinal display, Galaxy follows suit, uh, HTC and so on. So now it becomes a standard uh, for uh, resolution, okay? Now the Galaxy is about the same resolution. Uh, it's so-called true resolution because if you calculate the human eye resolution, if you uh, take my course again, the resolution is about, <laughs> <laughs> human eye resolution is 0.5 milli radian, and that's about 0.5 milli radian of resolution. I'll come take your, take your class to Rob, I mean, point. Okay, and uh, all right, so resolution is the same. Uh, now, the Galaxy uses a trick. It's called Pentile Display. It, it is similar to the Microsoft uh, so-called pixel rendering. Instead of having one pixel consisting of a red, green, and blue subpixels, one pixel becomes three subpixels, right? That's the true resolution. Uh, Galaxy uses a trick. It has only half of the red and blue, uh, blue so pixels, so it will save uh, space, right? So it, it has less number of pixels. Uh, the reason is that because the Galaxy is an OLED display, right? OLED is, if you take my course again, <laughs> organic light emitting diode. Now the Apple is LCD, right, LCD. Now LCD, okay, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> LCD is second generation and OLED is third generation. So uh, because it's very difficult to make, Galaxy has to, uh, Samsung has to uh, play tricks. So the end result is that you have uh, a lot of these Mori uh, patterns for high resolution displays. Okay, so uh, right, the display is much thinner for the Apple. Uh, now one, very important technology that Apple introduced. Every time Apple, Apple has a new phone, has some very important new technology. Now, the, in terms of touch, Apple uses now a so-called in-cell touch. It's the first uh, cell phone that uses that. Uh, Galaxy is a so-called one glass solution. It has an additional piece of glass, so it makes it uh, uh, thick. So without that additional piece of glass, the, the iPhone 5 uh, is, is much uh, crisper in terms of image. Okay, and uh, all right, I said uh, Galaxy has off balance, uh, off white balance, and uh, okay, these are technical terms, color shifts. Hoy, are Hoy, I think they're thinking about dinner more than Galaxy right okay, now. Okay, all right, so <laughs> the, the, end result, the end result is that the iPhone 5 all right, you're going, to miss your, looks you're, going to miss better. Your, you're going to miss your internship opportunity at, at Apple if you leave now. <laughs> Remember I but, told you. Yeah, so. Please. The Apple looks better, but it is still too small. So iPhone 6 should have a larger display. <laughs> all right, all right, just bear with me. You know, with, with, with Dark Vader, you know, kind of sacrificing himself to wrap up early. You know what I mean? Balancing the force. Now we're actually in harmony. Just give me two more minutes. We didn't do this just to have fun and have Professor actually get together and, and do a show. 
we, we actually really want to show you what EC is about. Maybe it's a joke that we say that these old Jedi's want to train you to be a Jedi, but in a way it really is, but it, it depends on what you're interested in, okay? It has to work. So next few slides is probably the most important one that we really want you to get over. <laughs> Hey, I, I only do one of those. You know? it's, all the, it's the whole entire department that's actually listed here. So, so go, go figure it out. And if you have questions, go figure it out. Now, you take all these, you learn about the, you, you learn about the basics. You learn about the basics. At the end of the day, you get an education from the university. You go get a job, right? We need multiple jobs. And hopefully you can get jobs from jobs, right? That would be good, no pun intended, all right? Now, uh, and, um, and you, can, you, you really need to, to kind of appreciate the environment that we're in. HKUST is two years in a row, ran number one in Asia overall. People are taking notice. Apple is recruiting here, all right? If you're interested in, send your CV or resume. If it's not long enough, call it resume, all right? Uh, to Vanessa by October 18th. There is going to be interview and a talk, recruitment talk on tentatively on uh, November 6th, all right? So as I advertise and promise, there will be job opportunities. And this is just a limited set of it. Last but not least, please, please let us know what you think. If you think this is kind of cool, is it kind of cool? Yeah. So let us know, please, please let us know what you think, all right? If you think that some of the Jedi is ugly, just let me know, all right? No, 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 no problem. Yoda is not that good looking. Let us know what can we follow up. If you don't want to just know your professor in the lecture hall, they give you homeworks and exams. If you just want to get to know us like fixing the lightsaber once in a while, if you have any activities, let us know. You know, we're human too. I like to muck around with this, but you know, I don't always have time. I got a six-year-old at home and a three. So email us or email me, and better yet, email Vanessa. All right, email Vanessa. Email Vanessa, all right, email Vanessa. Okay, good. And I really, really would like to, all right. Please, Vanessa, help out a lot, please. Thank you, let's give her. And obviously, I take all the Jedi's for granted, especially the Jedi that pays for everything. The head. The head is always thinking, and you know, I told him that you know, he, he, he gave me the assignment that can you do something that will excite the students who actually want to decide what to do and what EC is about. And I said, well, you know what, let's just do something that they can uh, relate to. Well, I think iPhone 5 is a very good one. So for those of you who actually, before you go, pick up one of these brochures, we have, a, we have an info day, I think that's what we call it on Saturday. So come by and, and try to learn even more. We will have faculties all around that day to explain and answer any question that you may actually have. And pick up one of these. We got Terminators too. We didn't talk about Terminator today. We got Terminator in the department. All right, this, this, is, this is GQ material, all right? Those of you who do not know what GQ is, go figure it out and, and go figure it out. GQ material. And, and also, there's one person that I really, really need to thank. Uh, we got the iPhone actually, I think, the day afterward, and I have a I wouldn't even call him a friend. I just, you know, he make money from my business, but he helped me. I call him up. Two hours later, the iPhone 5, I needed a white one because it had better contrast. He got it for me. The guy called Ahang from uh, Sinda Gongcha. I tell you, when I, when I talk to him, I think about you guys. I think about you guys. He is a hell lot better than me at opening up the iPhone. He decided to go there. Nothing wrong with it. He makes a lot of money. All right, but you got to think about, do you want to spend your summer Reselling iPhone, opening up iPhone, changing the facelift to pink color or something because my daughter likes pink. Or do you actually work on one of those IC, develop one of those app, or maybe do the OLED to actually make Professor Koch very proud? Think about that. Think about that, okay? Is that, that's the purpose why we're here. So five minutes behind schedule, thank you.